Assalamu alaikum everyone and thank you very much for joining another episode of Startup Talks. We are joined today by Amar Basit. He has uh, quite a bit of international exposure. He's got masters from Nottingham. He is currently with the British American Tobacco. He's been with them in the UK as well and in Pakistan. And uh, he is an expert in marketing and uh, strategy. Plus, uh, he is uh, also, uh, he just recently actually started his own post podcast by the name of uh, The Aging Millennial. Assalamu alaikum, Amar. How are you? Welcome, Sam Tamur. I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, thank you for so much, so much for having me over. Mm-hmm. To, you know, uh, that's, uh, the pleasure is great. mine. So, Amar, uh, you are right now in Islamabad. You've seen the world. Uh, uh, I was looking at your profile. Uh, uh, you've been around quite a lot uh, uh, and uh, you are mentoring uh, people as well with regards to uh, their career perspective. Uh, uh, what do you say, I mean, uh, what uh, does uh, the startup ecosystem lack in regards to uh, resource allocation and marketing strategy? Okay. So. Um, I've worked primarily in the FMCG space, um, you know, since 2010, mm-hmm. uh, more alongside in the international FMCG environments and different markets and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just relocated back to Pakistan about six months ago, primarily to Islamabad. Uh, and, and, you know, during this time, I've seen a huge, uh, I guess, news about startups, mm-hmm. um, but also great stuff happening in the space as well. Mm-hmm. So I have interacted with a few people from startups. And I think what, what they're growing through is, you know, the first phase, which is excitement of getting the funding Mm -hmm. and, you know, that, um, you know, we're going to do this with that and that with that and so forth and employing, you know, uh, tens and twenties and thirties of people. Um, however, I think, I believe that a lot of startups are somewhat, um, focused on the short term and, 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 you know, and, and they get kind of swayed away with this excitement. Um, so they end up hiring, you know, 50 people and then they have to fire them because they burn out faster. Mm -hmm. Uh, The cash burns out faster in that respect. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think what's lacking is, is, you know, uh, you know, just to sit down and think from a sustainable and long-term perspective on, you know, uh, how to make this brand more sustainable, how to make our services more sustainable. Uh, you know, what does the future hold? Um, you know, what plan B plan C is and so forth. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, it's great to be excited, right? And I think that's where startups need the mentoring is that people who have experience working in a large corporate environment, they can, you know, relate the pressures, the corporate pressures you might face going on. Mm -hmm. Um, But I guess it's a different world, but they're complementary, you know, complementary environments in that respect as well. Um, I absolutely agree with you. Uh, Looking at all the news that's uh, coming in uh, with regards to the ecosystem, especially during the past month, a few months actually, um, there is quite a bit of a FOMO, so to say, uh, effect uh, where uh, uh, most startups or most wannabe ent- entrepreneurs, most graduating kids, they uh, are getting in on the hype, right? For to me personally, I believe the ecosystem is still not out of it's uh, nascent uh, stages uh, just yet. It's just that the uh, uh, there is too much uh, uh, cash about to invest, um, not only in Pakistan but uh, in the whole uh, Menaf region, and uh, uh, Pakistan is also benefiting from that. It's not that there are uh, not good startups. There are some fantastic uh, ideas that are being floated here. And now, uh, uh, like you said, continuing with that notion of uh, proper planning with regards to uh, resource allocation, human resource allocation, that is, right? Uh, uh, taking on from there, uh, you are a person of marketing. Analytics and data, right? They play a key, play a key role uh, in any small business. They do play a key role in any business actually, but uh, that is the core 
uh, aspect that helps businesses grow, right? Especially small businesses. What do you say, have to say about that? Well, uh, so it's a good, it's a great question, actually. So, um, having worked in a, you know, couple of large organizations, mm -hmm. um, I have to be honest that uh, the large players are still plagued by large amounts of data, and they're still finding their way through mm -hmm. of how to first um, gather the data mm -hmm. and then make sense of it. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, they're, they they have all these fancy tools around. They use a tool for a year. And it becomes redundant the following year because it's not serving the purpose. So mm -hmm. I think large organizations are still finding the way. I think where startups or small businesses have an edge at the moment mm -hmm. is perhaps the time to kind of um, do a good survey of the market of what's available and what data is critical to us. So you can have huge amounts of data, but it's about what you'll do with it. You know, will you take action from that data? Uh, mm -hmm. What data do you need to make your decisions? So I think. It would be great if, you know, startups or small business sit down, you know, what, what data do we need? What decisions do we need to make? Um, and then start talking to data agencies according to that, uh, from, from that perspective. Or else, if they start going to the large data players and start getting a lot of data, it can become overwhelming and not serve the purpose as well. And then also end up in high cost. Getting data is not cheap. Yeah. So uh, I think there are, there are multiple factors that you need to, uh, you need to consider. But always, um, I think where I benefited from my mentors in my life and my, you know, uh, my past managers, is always making sure that whatever data you have and you uh, provide is actionable. Mm -hmm. um, if you can't take action on the data, then it's somewhat redundant, in my view. What about uh, integration of uh, data that is available uh, on with market research and? Uh, uh, the testing phase before launching any product, right? And then finally uh, reaching that stage of uh, an MVP, right? M uh, market viable product. Uh, what do you think are the key aspects that uh, uh, founders actually should consider before jumping on the bandwagon? Yeah. So I think with the new launch, it's very subjective yeah. um, if you go from industry to industry. Mm -hmm. So um, if I talk about, you know, launching a new, I used to work at Reckitt. So if I talk about launching a new Dettol SKU, mm -hmm. uh, maybe, you know, grabbing 5% share is a success story. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, working in the uh, pain category, like Panadol and something, mm -hmm. uh, a 5% might not be viable. Um, so it really depends on what industry you're talking about. But in order to make, uh, just going back to the earlier parts of your question, in order to make a good assessment of whether it's worth launching or not, yeah. um, I'm a true believer and a strong believer in the market research and insights. Mm -hmm. So um, it really depends on um, the, the nature of the product. So if it's a big launch and you know you want to disrupt the category, then research is vital. Um, th there are many research methodologies available, both on the cheap and the expensive. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's, and then whatever the research is telling you, you know, you need to listen to that. Mm -hmm. uh, we tend to kind of um, manipulate the data according to fit our story and what we want. But I think it should be the other way around. You know, you should use the data for that insights and really listen to it um, and do it according to that. So the first is, you know, having your research. Second is identifying what the six key success factors look like based on the industry you're working in. As I said before, a hygiene industry is very much different to you know um uh, the consumer healthcare industry yeah. um so it really depends on that that perspective um and then obviously it depends on how much budget you have right so uh instead of going big at once you can have pilot phases you can have test markets yeah. test cities where you can kind of test the product out with your target audience mm -hmm. and see the response to it and then you know fix along the way mm, absolutely now uh, deviating from that scenario uh, a little bit you've got a podcast as well uh, the aging millennial what's that all about it it's, uh, it's actually quite intriguing uh, now i've passed that age actually but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, uh, you and your peers uh, and the coming generations are i mean that's an interesting thing what's that about 
So uh, I'll be honest, I, I always had an interest in doing something else uh, in the media field. Mm -hmm. And because I listened to podcasts a lot, especially during COVID times when we were in lockdowns and whatnot, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I thought that why not start a podcast myself? Um, and, you know, I, I, I think living in a time where, you know, stress is high, anxiety is high, mm -hmm. uh, mental health is gaining awareness um, and people are talking more about self-care. Um, I just thought that I could perhaps share my experiences um, with people, which might help. So my target audience is not ex intentionally millennial. It's just because I am millennial, I thought it was a good name. I I'm sure everyone can benefit from it. <laughs> but there are a lot of issues, you know, that are very common to all of us. Like, for example, um, you know, burnout uh, at your job or, or, you know, or being in that flux where I'm not enjoying my job, what should I do? Mm -hmm. or uh, going through a tough relationship, you know? So, there's, so, so there are different factors. And I think um, speaking about them and sharing my experiences kind of helps people to relate, uh, but also start taking action in their life as well. That's an interesting point that you just raised there because startups, uh, especially founders, they uh, really uh, burn themselves out. Uh, and their immediate team as well, the decision makers. Sometimes they are uh, killing it with uh, 19, 20, 21 hours, 22 hours uh, in a given day. And uh, uh, it, at times I've seen cases that it's uh, difficult for them to uh, continue uh, with their uh, product, with their launch. They actually die out within the first uh, few months. It's said that within the first years, 80% of startups actually die out, only 20% make it to the second. And then of those 20% uh, further uh, more uh, die out the second year. So in your opinion, since you've got the podcast as well on the same subject, what do you think uh, is the way out? How should any startup founder proceed uh, of course, there's a lot of competition, a lot of pressure from uh, investors as well. What do you think? Uh, how, sh how should they take this aspect? So, uh, <laughs> it's a tough question. Um, so, I guess they need a very strong, for first, they need a very strong uh, H pers HR person or people's person yeah. who can, you know, uh, who understands people's behaviors um, because it's not just enough to give a good pay mm -hmm. or to give good benefits uh, at the moment. You know, it's more about understanding people and working with people uh, and finding what motivates them, what, what the barriers are. So I think um, startups, the, the founders, you know, they're, they're motivated because they own that business and they're answerable to the investors, as you said. Mm -hmm. But in the end, they we need to think about that if I don't have my people on board and if they're not really, uh, you know, uh, what's the right word, but they're not really in it with me mm -hmm. uh because they're tired mm -hmm. then that obviously that's something to worry about because the founder let's be honest you know they won't be able to do it themselves they need support around them yeah. and i think it's key really key to have you know to understand what drives your employees whether they're bought into the vision okay. um and because if because if they're not then you, you lose them down the line right so there are a lot of uh, people i have known who have burned out of their jobs and they left and they've been they're great talent but, uh, you know, now we're in an era where work-life balance is essential mm -hmm. and it should be encouraged. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now, uh, you know, we, we look for organizations, we offer this, uh, you know, where, where we're cared for, we want to work more. Mm -hmm. So it's a simple, you know, even with the manager, I'll say, if you have a manager who looks out for you, who respects your boundaries and who, you know, uh, is empathetic with you, mm -hmm. you'll tend to work with him or her a bit more mm -hmm. than whereas uh, if you have a manager who's, let's say, in the lightest sense, a dictator. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it kind of puts you off. So I think startups have a great chance because they're setting up a company, but also maybe start bringing culture change or the work culture change within Pakistan as well. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great opportunity and they should really look into it because if you don't have your employees on board, mm -hmm. then um, you won't be able to deliver in the end. And work from home is actually uh, quite an interesting aspect there as well. Uh, but uh, um, I remember uh, when the pandemic started and we were working from home, it was like uh, um, a tougher job than sitting in the office and working uh, at the office premises. 
so uh, i totally uh, relate to what you uh, just said now um coming back to uh, uh, the startup scene your uh, marketing and analytics scene uh in pakistan it's a, actually a global phenomenon where uh, there is a, a dearth of uh, resources uh, available right uh, before we started the talk in our short conversation before that you mentioned um, uh, you, you you brought up the uh, uh, aspects of uh, human resources and allocation into startups right uh, there is quite a bit of a challenge with regards to expertise because there's a lot of technology involved now and uh, uh, a lot of uh, digital aspects as well especially in your forte ie marketing uh, how do you think uh, the startups uh, from a startups point of view how do you think they should cope with that right uh, because uh, that's a very time consuming thing for resource and skills to build up and uh, on the resource side who people uh, because there are thousands of people graduating every 6 months from uh, universities in pakistan so how do you think they could m- make the transition into uh, better careers uh, more quickly Okay. So I think I'll start with the resource um, mm-hmm. part first, actually. Yeah. So um, just taking my example, um, I did my master's in economics and job in economics, and I didn't have a clue um, of what I really wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So I joined a BAT as a, a management trainee, and then kind of discovered, uh, you know, later down the line, maybe two years down the line, that I actually enjoy marketing mm-hmm. and insights. Mm-hmm. um and i think that's how my career then kind of panned out so i think if from a resource perspective if you're young mm-hmm. i think firstly don't pressure yourself to uh, maybe identifying what you want to do for the next you know 60 years mm-hmm. because because then you're tying yourself down to a particular uh, industry which may evolve over time mm-hmm. and you know which may a, a, you know ai or robots might take over down the line especially with the insights part of stuff yeah um so what my advice is do you know identify your interests so mm-hmm. for example if you have a creative creative side or you have an analytical side make sure you to do something um you know uh, with that so for example linkedin has a lot of training courses online yeah. and i know a lot of ivy league universities offering free courses as well so maybe make use of that mm-hmm. um and the people i have mentored um they have been doing these courses and trainings online as well to kind of build up their cv mm-hmm. um and just kind of show that interest you know that we have we, we are eager to learn um and this is the area space i would learn i think from an employer perspective i think we need to be very real uh you won't get any perfect candidate yeah. and i think if you expect someone to know everything then it's pointless recruiting him or her because they need that challenge to grow and i think what employers need to do and one of my employers did really well is that you need to offer on the job training as well mm-hmm. so on the job training actually makes a much larger difference than off the job we we all know that so you know make sure you get them challenging work which gets them out of their comfort zone but make sure that's complemented with relevant training courses as well um you know so th- there are a lot of marketing training academies around which offer digital courses um so that should be a regular part of that curriculum because even as let's say a founder a co-founder of a startup you may not know about everything that's happening in your ecosystem absolutely so it's also being aware of what's happening but also making sure that learning uh is a key part of your thing from a employee point of view mm-hmm. uh, but from an employer point of view as well so i think that's my advice you know um to to both sides of the spectrum uh interesting uh, thing you mentioned there uh about uh, keeping targets uh, 10 20 30 years down the line i remember when uh, i was starting out my career we used to go for interviews and the most common question was where do you see yourself in 5 years right i, I think uh, that concept has uh, actually gone out of the window a lot of things are happening a lot of things are cha- changing um on a weekly monthly basis uh, and technology is uh, disrupting disrupting all that 
So uh, you'd be surprised though. Yeah. You'd be surprised. I still get asked this question: Where do you want to be in five years? <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's actually uh, it, I I actually consider it as something out of the stone ages because uh, you don't know the person who actually is asking that uh, that silly question. He also doesn't know where he is going to be in the next five years. Right? Things things are evolving so quickly. So, uh, Amar, uh, thank you very much for being here on Startup Talks. I really enjoyed talking to you. Hopefully, we'll do it again sometime. And uh, I uh, do hope uh, that uh, whoever uh, watches this uh, has uh, a lot of th uh, stuff to learn from uh, what you stated about analytics uh, and resource allocation and marketing. Um, hopefully, we'll do it again sometime. If you know anybody who wants to uh, get uh, uh, featured or feature someone else, right? They are more than welcome. You can refer them uh, here on the platform. So, Amar, yeah. it's great talking to you. As I said, thank you so much for having me. And yes, uh, we should continue these interactions. Yeah. Um, obviously, the marketing uh, insights analytics field is so large. So, mm -hmm. I've only touched upon you know the. I'm, like just I'm actually there. I'm actually looking for somebody, uh, a, a sort of like no, not a, a professional training uh, course kind of thing, but somebody who wants to give a crash course, a walkover on what digital marketing is all about, what uh, what analytics is all about, uh, uh, importance of uh, data collection. Uh, blockchain all those kinds of things uh, if you know anybody uh, who wishes to do that and make a short videos uh, which we can put on here for people to benefit that will be great as well yeah yeah i'm sure i'm sure there will be people here and there i mean we have a very talented brunch honestly yeah. in pakistan um and the skill set i've seen here is exemplary so i'm sure there'll be someone you know to yeah. fill in these gaps then it was great talking to you hopefully we'll do it again sometime Thank you. Have a great day. Take care. Thank you. Allah Take care. Allah